In this video, I'm going to talk about regenerative gas turbines, but before I do that, I want to talk about why we need regenerative gas turbines in the first place. So when we looked at the Brayton cycle or the ideal Brayton cycle, what we saw was this TS diagram here. And from this TS diagram, what you can readily see is that the turbine exhaust temperature, which is at state four here, this is usually well above the ambient temperature. And that means that the turbine exhaust here, because this is the turbine inlet at three, we've got the turbine exhaust at four or the turbine outlet at four. So the turbine exhaust gas is hot. And what that means is that it has still the potential usage if it isn't discarded to the surroundings. And one of the ways to utilize this is by means of a heat exchanger, which is called a regenerator. And this regenerator allows the air that is exiting the compressor to be preheated before it enters the combustion chamber. What that means is that the purpose of the regenerator is um, to allow the air that is exiting the compressor at state two to be preheated uh, to a certain extent before it can enter into the combustion chamber and the combustion chamber process is two to three. So if it is already preheated, then that means, for example, we would uh, have the um, compressor exhaust entering into the combustion chamber somewhere here at this point instead of at state two. So what that means is that this is reducing the amount of fuel that we should be using to, to burn uh, the fuel with the air in the combustion chamber. So let's just look at the schematic of how uh, this uh, regenerator operates. The regenerator that is shown in this figure here is a counterflow heat exchanger. So that means that the hot exhaust gas and the air that is leaving the compressor pass in the opposite direction. So you've got the uh, air that is leaving the compressor coming in here and the turbine exhaust now moving into the regenerator in the opposite directions. So what's gonna happen now? That the turbine exhaust gas is going to cool down from state four to state Y, let's just call it state Y, after it has interacted with this air that was exiting the compressor. And then this air that was exiting the compressor at state two is going to heat up from state two to state X. So to make the, this realization look better visually, let's just look at the TS diagram now for this schematic with the regenerator included in there. And this is what we're gonna have now, that we've got this two to X process in a way that is happening within the regenerator. So this heating up or this heat content being added is being added within the regenerator. So Q dot, this is because of the regenerator. And then from state X, to state three, this process is the one that is now happening in the combustion chamber from state X until state three. So this is now your actual Q dot in. So, you know, it's um, easier to realize now that instead of supplying Q dot in from state two until state three, we have to provide less amount of fuel from state state x until state three in terms of an equation what that means is that your q dot in is going to be if it's on a on a unit mass basis it's going to be h3 minus hx now instead of h3 minus h2 and if you were looking at the cold air standard analysis, this would be equal to CP into T3 minus TX. So 
So for the same cycle, if I remove the regenerator from in here, then the only thing that is going to change is the amount of heat content that is be, uh, provided or the amount of fuel that is provided. So the only thing that is changing is Q dot in. What I mean to say is that the net work that is developed per unit mass of flow remains the same uh, whether the regenerator is added or not. The only difference that takes place is that the heat added or the heat content that is added is reduced. So in terms of thermal efficiency, which is a ratio of your net work developed to uh, the heat content added, because the heat content has reduced, the heat addition has reduced, then the thermal efficiency for that cycle is going to increase. Another point to notice is that from this equation here, what this equation shows you is that the external heat transfer that you require uh, or the external heat transfer that the gas power plant requires is going to decrease as this specific enthalpy increases. So if you keep increasing this point x, then the heat content that you're adding into the system by means of fuel is going to decrease. So naturally the question would be, how much can you increase this point, this x? Where is the maximum theoretical limit of this point x and in turn where is the maximum theoretical limit of the specific enthalpy hx and the temperature tx. So to answer this question we need to look at the regenerator in a bit more detail and find out what the maximum theoretical value for tx is going to be. So to answer that question, let's just look at uh, the regenerator in a bit more detail. And from this figure, what we see is that the temperature of the exhaust gas from the turbine, which is this hotter stream, interacts with the air from the compressor exit, which is the colder stream. Um, and the temperature of this exhaust gas, the turbine exhaust gas, is going to decrease while the temperature of this colder stream uh, coming in from the compressor is going to rise. And this energy transfer, however, is limited because it's, it's a heat exchanger. So um, that means that there is a certain limit to the heat transfer area of this heat exchanger. And because of that, uh, there's going to be a delta T here that is going to exist which means that there's going to be a limit to how much energy uh, this hotter stream can transfer to the colder stream because obviously we cannot have an infinite area for this heat exchanger. So because we have a finite area, that means that there's going to exist a limit to delta T here. Now let's just imagine that if this heat transfer area is increased further and further, then what that's going to mean is that the delta T is going to keep on reducing and these two lines are going to start coming closer to each other. And then if we had a situation where we had an infinite heat transfer area now, then delta T would be approaching zero at all locations. And what that means is that the exit temperature of air is going to approach the inlet temperature of the exhaust gas from the turbine. And that means that the highest possible temperature that could be achieved by the air is that of the incoming um, exhaust gas from the turbine. And that temperature is T4 because that is the exhaust gas temperature from the turbine. So that means that the maximum theoretical limit for Tx is then going to be if Tx is equal to T4. And what that means is that the regenerator would be operating reversibly. So let me just repeat this point again here. This heat exchanger here has a finite heat transfer area. If we keep on in basically making the size of this heat exchanger bigger and bigger and bigger, then the heat transfer area is going to keep on increasing. 
and because the heat transfer area is increasing that means that the temperature that can be imparted from the hotter stream to the colder stream is going to keep on increasing as well so the delta t here the difference between the temperatures of the hot and colder stream are going to um, is going to reduce and if say we can come to a point an imaginary point where we've got the infinite heat transfer area then this delta t is going to be so minute it's going to be so low that the exit temperature of the air is going to be approaching the inlet temperature of the exhaust over here they're almost going to be the same so that means that the highest possible temperature that can be achieved by this colder stream is going to be that of the incoming exhaust gas and the incoming exhaust gas was coming in from state 4 so that means your tx the maximum theoretical limit for tx is going to take place when tx becomes equal to t4 which is not possible realistically or in an actual cycle but if the uh, cycle or the regenerator were operating reversibly then this would be the maximum theoretical limit to make um, our analysis easier or to make this assessment easier we use the parameter called regenerator effectiveness which is basically the ratio of the actual uh, regenerator to the ideal regenerator and that means it's the ratio of the actual enthalpy increase of air flowing through the compressor side to the maximum theoretical enthalpy increase for the ideal regenerator and that is given in this form so this over here is your actual regenerators uh, enthalpy hx minus h2 uh, delta h and divided by h4 minus h2 where h4 is at this point so this is your ideal regenerator which is this case so that is going to give you the regenerator effectiveness and usually this regenerator effectiveness is around 60 to 80 percent what this equation also shows you is that as the heat transfer is going to approach reversibility your hx is going to be approaching h4 and the regenerator effectiveness is essentially going to be 100 percent which is only possible in an ideal scenario now a question that you could ask here is that why is the regenerator effectiveness from around 60 to 80 percent and the answer for that is that because uh, if we wanted to increase the effectiveness any more than that then that means that we would have to have a greater heat transfer area and that would mean that the equipment costs might go higher which would basically cancel out any advantages uh, that we would have had by the fuel savings so uh, we have to give or take and look at what's feasible for us in terms of the equipment costs as well um, in order for us to decide whether adding the regenerator is uh, worth it so let's just quickly look at an example that is related to um, the Brayton cycle with regeneration included as well We've got this regenerator incorporated in here that has a regenerator effectiveness of 80 percent uh, first of all if you're given a question make sure that you draw the schematic if the schematic is not given to you if it's given to you then move ahead and draw the ts diagram if it's possible so using the ts diagram if let's say you're um, using the air standard analysis then you would have to find out the enthalpies at all the states so you go ahead and find out the enthalpies at state 1, state 2, state 3, and state 4. And then what you would do is that you would, from uh, the relationship that was previously shown to you for the regenerator effectiveness, and using this relationship because the enthalpies at 1, 2, 3, and 4 are easier to find, we can go ahead and find out the enthalpy at state x here. 
and uh, because the regenerator effectiveness is given to us, so all the other values are known, we can go ahead and find out the value for hx. And one important point here is that this is going to change the value for thermal efficiency as well, because although uh, the net work output doesn't change, it's going to remain uh, worked in across the turbine. So that's H3 minus H4 uh, minus work done across the compressor, which is H2 minus H1 divided by Q dot N. And Q dot N across the combustor is going to be H3 minus HX instead of H3 minus H2. So that is something that we need to account for that over here, it's going to remain the same, but down here, we're going to have H3 minus HX, and that's how the thermal efficiency is going to change.